and I'm here for a session in Kitchen Table Forensics. With me is Anurag Singh of SysTools and uh, I'm pleased to, to uh, walk through with you how we would uh, do a forensic image. At present, Sistol Software is amongst the notable brands representing India with its active and aggressive contribution in the field of digital forensics and e-discovery which reflects their involvement in researching internet-based activities to come up with a solution to tackle the outcome. Sistols has deep-seated with corporate, academic and law enforcement agencies. The significant progress of the company is likely across a broad spectrum of technologies. In cloud computing, Sistols has provided many solutions for making data safe and secure and is still working to compete the challenges faced by clients to handle the data accessibility anytime, anywhere. So currently we are in Sistols USA Labs. So here you can see all the forensic equipments we use for performing forensic investigations. So with me is Mr. Devashish Pramanik. Who is currently recording this video? The US expert Scott Tucker. Hello, Mr. Scott. So, Scott, how is this going on? Oh, uh, we're doing great business here, and uh, many people seek us out for our expertise. So this is our suspect computer, and for discussion purposes, we would open this up. Now typically you'd use some tools, I'll show you some tools that I have in my forensic kit in a moment. This one is so easy though, it just uh, opens up without any tools required. It's so easy that I can't really quite seem to, well, there we go, it's easy. Now in a computer like this. The hard drive, which in this case is an SSD, can be easily removed and you'll see that it's a SATA interface like most hard drives. So for argument purposes, for example sake, this is what the computer would look like. Now let's take a look at our uh, forensic toolkit to see what we've got. Here in the toolkit, as you can see, I've got a number of items. To start with, we have a chain of custody form. Yeah is, as I mentioned, a toolkit. Here's a toolkit that I use from iFixit. It's got every imaginable uh, tool, including a, a spudger, if you've got to pry open a plastic case, and uh, a wide variety of screwdriver tips. And this USB 3 hard drive bay is what we're going to use to store the drive image. So I have a wiped hard drive, that I previously prepared to ensure that there's no remaining data on this drive that I can use for this. Uh, as well, it could also work with uh, a full-size uh, SATA drive, three and a half inch. For our purposes though, we're just going to use this wiped drive. If this were a real case, I would have labeled this drive right now to indicate what drive image it is that I'm storing on here. I simply plug this in to use a simple cable like this where the power is supplied directly through the USB port. No need for a, a separate adapter. Either one is acceptable, although this little cable only works with the two and a half inch drives. It does not supply enough power to power the full three and a half inch where you need to use a separate external. But I'll show you a couple of other examples of write blockers. Tableau is a commonly used one, widely used in the industry. And then here's also uh, the forensic combo dock. Now what's different about this compared to the one I'm about to show you is this will both read and write data. And so this is a write blocker by default. It's possible to turn it off. In general, for simplicity, I just recommend the simple write block only. So here's the ultra dock, the forensic ultra dock by uh, CRU and Tech. And so it's going to need power. We'll plug it in in a minute. There is a USB 3 connection to the laptop. 
in order to capture the information and as well both power and data that goes to our source drive. We simply connect this up to the right locker. Make sure the right blocker is off because we're going to plug it into power in a moment. It doesn't really matter what order you plug these in, provided that you don't turn it on until everything is connected. This is where the source of the data is going to go to the right blocker. Now for those of you unfamiliar with right blockers, the concept is that this device makes it impossible for the Windows machine to write data back to the source or the suspect drive. This ensures that nothing on this drive changes. Now the rules are a little bit more complicated with an SSD in terms of uh, whether or not two captures are going to give precisely the same information, but for our purposes today, this is going to be uh, an excellent solution. So I simply take the uh, right blocker, plug it into my computer, make sure it's on a super speed USB 3 slot. When I turn this on, this comes there, we've got power to the device and now power to the drive. This will now register this drive as being available as a source of data on the, the, the host computer from which I will be running the software. Next, we're gonna plug in the destination drive. So if I can find the USB port, there it is. You'll note here that the drive has now been formatted. And so this is the uh, destination drive on which we're going to store the image. It's a drive D. Now I had previously unplugged the right blocker just to so everything was crystal clear. While we've got disk management, I'm going to plug it back in again. And you'll see the new drive image. It has now become a, a part of disk management, and so we know that that's uh, ready to uh, uh, ready to be imaged. However, it is write uh, blocked, so nothing will be written to that uh, that data drive. I'm going to close disk management. We don't need it anymore. Next, I'm going to start a commonly used um, imaging tool called FTK Imager. FTK Imager is made by a company called Access Data and it is free, a free download, and is commonly used by uh, forensic examiners to create forensic images of hard drives. I'm going to select Create Disk Image from the menu. Uh, the source is going to be a physical drive. Even though it's coming through the right blocker, that's how we do this, the physical drive. Next, we select which drive it is. It is this last one. It is physical drive to the CRU USB device. We'll click, we'll click finish. And finally, we select uh, to add a particular image type. You'll see that there are uh, four image types that are supported. The raw, which is uncompressed. Uh, smart, which um, uh, is, appears not to be in wide use. E01 is the de facto standard and AFF is a uh, an open source um, version, but we're going to use E01 as our drive image. Here's where we would enter a bunch of information. The case number, for example, 1704. Uh, the evidence number is 01. Here would be a unique description. Perhaps this is a system drive from, let's see if I can type correctly, drive. You can edit that out, can't you? from Dell Mini Computer. I am H. Scott Tucker and Dell. Next, we specify the destination folder. So where are we going to want to store this? Well, this was the entire purpose for having formatted drive D. And so we're going to store it in drive D and typically I will make a folder for, uh, for the image. And uh, your naming conventions are something that you will have to decide. But here I've got the, the, the drive that has the name of the uh, particular image as well as a subfolder called image. That's what we're going to use. 
And then the uh, file name, we'll simply use 1704-01. It will add the E01, and in fact, it'll break it into chunks. I'm giving a, uh, a 4,000 megabyte, or in other words, a four gig fragment size or chunk. And compression is not terribly important in this case. It's helpful to have some level of compression, but I'm not going to use very much. I click finish. There are a couple of other checkboxes here, including pre-calculate pro progress statistics. This is very helpful because it gives an estimate of how long it's going to take to complete the, pro the uh, process. And that's a very good idea, as well as it is to verify the images after they're created. I click start and it starts imaging. Um, and um, you can see here that based on the setup that we're using, for whatever reason, the speed is about 45 megabytes per second, increasing 55. I expect it to get up to somewhere around 100 megabytes per second as it's running. So let's see how it's doing. And there it's starting and it's uh, finally figuring out that it's going to take about four hours or less to image this terabyte drive. And it looks like it's leveled off somewhere around, uh, well, 68, it's still increasing. 67, 68 megabytes per second. Depending on your computer, depending on the chipset that implements the USB 3, your speed may be faster or slower. Um, when you're benchmarking computers to try to decide what to use, this is kind of the perfect setup. A USB 3 write blocker writing out to a USB 3 uh, uh, destination and see how fast the throughput is. All right, so while we're doing this, let's take a look at um, what's, uh, what's being written to that D drive. And so you see the first E01 is in process of being created. And um, you could, um, you'll see the next E01 get created shortly after this reaches the size of uh, four gigs. At the end of the process, we're going to have a string of E01s. We're gonna have a, 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 a text file, and the text file is a report of the overall imaging process. It will contain that metadata that we entered at the beginning, the name of the case and the, the examiner and so on, as well as hash values, specifically MD5 and SHA-1 hash values. Uh, the reason that I choose four gigs as a uh, fragment size is because that fits nicely onto uh, FAT32 formatted drives, since that's the maximum uh, file size. So in the case that you had to copy this drive image in fragments, onto a FAT32 drive, everything will come along nicely. Um, at this point, it's just a matter of waiting. And when it's done, it's done. And that completes the demonstration. I hope this was helpful.